Welcome back to the Z Code System channel. I'm Drew, and it's great to have you back here for another video here on the channel. And this week, we're going to talk about the upcoming NBA basketball season, which will be tipping off next Tuesday, December the 22nd. Now, as I talk to you right now, it is Thursday, um, the 17th, and we are preparing for the upcoming season. Uh, tip off for what will be a 72 game season is just around the corner. And a lot of sports books picking the LA Lakers to repeat as champions of the NBA after a uh, very shortened um, off season in which we did see the NBA previous season because of COVID nineteen end in I guess it was September October um, time uh, finishing up there and we go into this new season after a bit of chaos getting things prepared and getting things organized and now we go into the season. Uh, with a lot of hope and expectations for the future uh, with the NBA and what will be happening. So a lot of things going on within the association uh, with player movement, as well as the draft, which uh, recently happened. And of course, preseason going on right now. Now today in our video, not only am I going to talk about a little bit of the season upcoming, um, again, tipping off next Tuesday, the uh, December the 22nd, but I'm also going to give you a couple of picks from our VIP picks for preseason games coming up this weekend on Saturday. So stay tuned for that as we take a look at those with the VIP. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys, uh, we're talking to you about the NBA today for the fact that um, because the things have been a little bit in chaos, I've not kept up with all the player movement um, and all the different things that have been going on uh, in terms of players swapping uh, teams with free agency as well as um, the NBA draft. But one thing I do know is that yesterday um, it was announced uh, that Giannis had signed a new extension with the Milwaukee Bucks to keep him there in Milwaukee and Cream City, which is a bit of a shock because myself and, of course, a lot of other people, um, NBA insiders as well as uh, betters and NBA fans, expected him to leave for pastures new to go perhaps to the Lakers or to the Clippers or perhaps even to New York to play for the Knicks. Um, but he has signed a massive contract, which will pay him $228.2 million over the next, I believe it's four years. Um, so he will be staying in Milwaukee to pursue an NBA title. And of course, Milwaukee has been the best team in the East uh, in the regular season, that is, over the last two years. Now, I am the type of sports fan who I'm not a big fan of playoffs because I don't think it rewards necessarily the best teams overall. But we did see that with the Lakers last year. They were uh, the best team in the NBA. We saw that um, uh, back with the NHL season with the Tampa Bay Lightning winning. But we don't always see that with major sports. Uh, I think maybe more so with the NBA, we do see that because the gap between the top team in the division or in the conference, that is, um, is always miles ahead of that eighth place team. So um, I have digressed, though, uh, because Milwaukee has been the class of the East in the regular season over the last few years. And if they had lost Giannis, that would be a huge blow to them and their hopes of getting back into um, the playoffs as a number one or number two seed. Uh, can Milwaukee now win the NBA title? Well, it, it remains to be seen because the Lakers are still a very good team uh, with LeBron James uh, still playing at his uh, highest potential. Now, there have been a couple of moves um, that I've just kind of highlighted um, going into this season. Obviously, um, in November, uh, Oklahoma City sending Chris Paul to the Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul had gone to Houston a few years ago. It didn't really work there with him and James Harden. He goes to Oklahoma City um, on a massive contract, and they ended up shipping him out. Uh, Ricky Rubio was part of that trade, but he's now finding himself in Milwaukee. Uh, sorry, in Minnesota. Um, he's gone back there. And we've also seen some moves. Uh, Seth Curry heading to the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, and as I just scroll through a few more of these uh, moves that happened here in the offseason, 
and I'm going to miss probably some big ones that uh, some people are going to be shouting at me. So just leave those in the comments and we'll address those later on. But um, some of the other big moves uh, or moves happening um, during this off season, uh, including um, Enos Cantor going to the Portland Trail Blazers from the Boston Celtics. So, uh, you know, not too long ago, Cantor was a uh, player that a lot of uh, NBA pundits and um, onlookers were very high on, uh, but he goes now to the Portland Trailblazers to help them down low in the uh, front court. So, like I say, a lot of um, moves going on. Um, not a lot of names, really, as I, I don't know, like I say, I'm scrolling through a few of these moves that have, um, that have happened um, back during the offseason, uh, some of these trades and free agent moves. Uh, not a lot necessarily... Um, sticking out, uh, Drew Holiday does arrive in Milwaukee uh, from the New Orleans Saints, uh, sorry, not New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelicans in a four-team trade. So he's he's arrived there to give a little bit of help to um, Giannis. So that, that could be a, a significant move for the team. Now, of course, if you scroll down, if you go over to the blog, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, on our channel, you can go over to the blog and there we go right there, the NBA 2021 season of what to expect. So we're taking a look at a few of the things um, that are going on um, this year because this is going to be a uh, different year. They've they've um, altered things a little bit. And if you heard what I said earlier, this season is going to be a 72 game season. We're going to see uh, 10 games fewer this year as the NBA packs in uh, games uh, during the regular season to prepare for the postseason. Now, um, some significant dates is, of course, right now we are in the preseason. The 19th will be the last day of the preseason games, and that is on Saturday. And I'm going to give you a couple of games today. I'm going to give you a couple previews, or not previews, some picks uh, for games uh, going on on Saturday. And we're going to see the first half of the NBA regular season last from December 22nd to March 4th. And then we're going to see the All-Star break. Yes, they're going to fit in the All-Star game from March 5th to March 10th. So we're going to have the All-Star game. And then on the 11th of March until the 16th of May, we're going to see the second half of the regular season. Now, something that I'm not too excited about, and I'm sure there are fans who will be, but there are also fans who won't be, uh, the NBA is bringing back the play-in tournament. So we're going to see a play-in tournament this season once more to get the last two teams for each conference sorted for the playoffs, we're going to see those seven and eight seeds um, sorted uh, through the play-in tournament to get into the playoffs. Now, I think this is a bit messy and a bit ridiculous, and you know, some a way to build artificial excitement. And that's me talking as an NBA fan, as a basketball fan. Uh, I know a lot of betters will love that because you're going to have some extra games to wager on. Now, as we know, uh, people who watch a lot of basketball, a lot of NBA. Once we get to the playoffs and we see those uh, first round games, there's not a lot of excitement in many of those series for the, especially for the one versus eight and the two versus sevens. Um, there's not a lot of excitement. Now the NBA here trying to build some excitement, build some momentum for these teams going into those games. Now, if you go to the blog there, zcodesystem.com backslash blog, and you look at our NBA 2020, 2021 season uh, preview or explanation there, you'll be able to read this a little bit more in depth. But for the most part, um, the NBA has made it possible to where the uh, teams in the conferences who are the 7th, 8th, uh, let me see, 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th best teams, they will all play in the play-in round tournament. So we're going to see a 7-8 game and an 8-9 game, sorry, a 9-10 game. Um, to, to go for this, uh, to get these teams into the playoffs. So again, a bit of artificial excitement, some extra games to be played. And for the most part, this is going to, in the NBA's eyes, make up for there being 10 fewer games um, during the regular season uh, to sort out the teams for the playoffs. Now, in my opinion, as a basketball fan, as a sports fan, you don't need this extra tournament. You don't need 10 extra games, 72 games should be able to sort it for um, the NBA season to determine the playoff teams. But I digress because this is what the NBA has done. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of fans out there who actually like this, especially those teams who support those teams um, and are excited to see those teams make the playoffs. And of course, general managers and coaches will love this because they can put on their resumes that they've made the playoffs. So 
Anyway, we're going to have those games, the 7, 8, and the, uh, sorry, yeah, it's the 7, 8, and the 9, 10 games. It's just a bit confusing with it, and I'm sure I'm not the only basketball fan that will be a bit confused by it this season. Now, one new uh, note of news is that the Toronto Raptors will begin their season playing in Florida. Uh, home games will be played there in Tampa. Uh, rather than in Toronto due to the travel restrictions due to COVID-19. And the hope is that the Raptors will be able to move uh, back home to Toronto and play, uh, I guess, the second half of the season and the playoffs there in Toronto. Now, I think once they get to the playoffs, you're going to see a little bit of uh, problems, especially for the Raptors once they move home uh, with teams coming and going. So, during the playoffs, the Raptors might have to play all of their games on the road or in Tampa. And for the most part, this season might actually just see the Raptors playing in Florida during the entire year. Um, and what we could see at the end of the year, once we get to the playoffs, is another bubble. We could see it just like we did last year with what they did in Orlando and what uh, Major League Baseball did when they went to the playoffs uh, playing, I believe it was in Atlanta and in, uh, and in Texas, uh, playing the playoffs they had the regular season uh, with teams going around the country. But then once the playoffs happened, they uh, put everybody in one place. So we could see that with the NBA this season as things, hopefully, fingers crossed, with vaccines now coming out, uh, fingers crossed, uh, things getting back to normal. Now, depending on which NBA team you support and which city you live in, it will depend on whether fans can get into games. Now, I believe it was the Orlando Magic have uh, stated that 4,000 fans will be allowed into each of their first five home games, and then they will assess or reassess uh, what they're going to do going forward. Now, of course, with the way things are right now, things can change on a moment's notice. So by the time that you see this, Orlando could change their decision on um, how many fans they allow in or whether fans will be allowed in at all. So um, keep abreast of that because home fans and attendance could change the way that the games, uh, the outcomes of games and the way things are played. So fans can dictate that, uh, especially for um, underdog teams uh, who are playing at home against some of the better teams in the NBA. Now, before we get to our VIP picks, I'm going to give you a couple of picks for Saturday, the last day of the preseason games. I want to take a look just very quickly at NBA futures odds and the upcoming NBA season as teams fight for the uh, the NBA title. Okay, so I have just brought up simplyactionnetwork.com today, uh, and that's who I'm looking at here for some just odds. Just wanted to give you a few odds here, uh, and you know, of course, use your favorite online sports book uh, for your NBA betting or all your sports betting. But this is just what I picked up today, just to have these odds right here in front of you. And as you can see, the LA Lakers are currently the consensus favorite to win the NBA title at plus 275. Giannis and the Bucks plus 550. And of course, we've got the Clippers there at plus 575. And uh, of course, the Clippers with Kawhi Leonard. And they did all right last season, but uh, it just fell short of making it all the way to the NBA Finals. Now, interesting there, the Brooklyn Nets at plus 600. And of course, the Nets with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. So a lot of bookies looking at the Nets as potential favorites to come out of the Eastern Conference. Now, of course, the Bucs uh, have been brilliant over the last two seasons, picking up the number one seed and winning the East in the regular season. Um, but the Nets, they're not too far off. And you know what? I like the Nets, but a lot of questions will be around Kevin Durant uh, coming back from injury and when he plays. Uh, whether he will be able to replicate the form that he had prior to going down with an injury and whether he will still be the player that uh, we all saw with Golden State Warriors and before that, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Big question around Durant is that the fact that he has been off for over a year uh, out with injury, uh, maybe I guess May, June of 2019 was the last time that he uh, played a regular season game or, or a, a postseason game before he got injured with that uh, Achilles issue. Um, so big questions will be asked around whether he can, uh, his body will be able to last a full season. So we've got the odds there. And I just scroll down, you can see a few of the more, a uh, few more of them, uh, Boston, uh, Miami, Philadelphia, uh, 
we've got the Nuggets. And look at the Warriors all the way down there at plus, uh, plus 2,500. Uh, the Warriors now second best, maybe even third, fourth best in the Western Conference, even with um, even with Steph Curry. They are now not uh, favored so highly by the leading sports books. Now, of course, like I said before, use your favorite sports books for all of this, um, all of your betting, all of your odds. But I just wanted to use this to give you a nice cross section of what some of the sports books there are picking for favorites. Now, before I go today, guys, love having you here on the YouTube channel. And if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Leave comments. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know who you think is going to win the NBA title this season and who you think is going to be perhaps a dark horse this year in the NBA. Now, before we go, uh, let's take a look at a couple of VIP picks for Saturday night when the NBA finishes up the preseason. Okay, so you can see here we have the VIP wall here at Z Code System, and I have just already put it on NBA, and we've also got it on December the 19th, which, as I said before, is the last day of the preseason uh, in the NBA before we get started next Tuesday, December the 22nd, just before Christmas. What a Christmas present it will be. Um, now, we've got three games here on our wall that we're going to take a look at, um, and uh, matter of fact, We'll take a look at all three of these. So we've got Charlotte taking on Orlando Magic first. And we've got this here. And I'm just going to take away the Z signal box there because it's just in the way. Uh, but you can bring that up on yours. And now we see right here we've got two teams, Ice Cold, uh, Ice Cold down for Charlotte and Orlando dead, absolutely dead. And uh, now these odds not out just yet. Um, but we're seeing our teams here, how they've been playing. And, of course, uh, Orlando finishing up the season last year in very poor form. Uh, they did start the preseason with a win over Atlanta, four-point win over Atlanta, and then they fell to Atlanta in a second preseason game. So not coming into this uh, with very much momentum from the last time, from last season. Then we switch over to uh, Charlotte, who have lost both of their uh, preseason games. Now, if you remember, Charlotte didn't even make the uh, postseason last year. They didn't come back from uh, when the season shut down in March. So they have had a very long time off, and that looks to have shown in their preseason games. Now, they did play Toronto, uh, who are one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference, and we see they're an 11-point loss on the first night, on the 12th, and then on the 14th, they fell by three uh, to Toronto. Now, before we we take a further look at this, we can see last season's games uh, between these two teams, they played twice last season, January and February, before the season ended, and we saw Orlando picking up two wins, and those were both away wins for Orlando. Now, with Orlando uh, having had a little bit of time to play at the end of last season in the playoffs or in those play-in games, I like Orlando to win this game against Charlotte. Charlotte continuing to be a struggler and a team that's you know not very good in the uh, – not very good at the moment, uh, one of those teams that is always kind of in a building phase, and I'm thinking Orlando are going to win this game and uh, pick up a second win of the preseason to close things out. But, of course, you guys can come on here and you can look at all the stats and pick your favorite or your team that you think is going to win this game here. And as we get closer to the game, you will see more odds put up here or the odds put up here on Z Code Systems Wall. Now let's take a look at the Detroit Pistons and the Washington Wizards going at this, and both teams dead uh, going into this game. Uh, Pistons are dead up after coming off of a win. Now we can see Washington there. Uh, Washington did make it to those play-in games in the postseason uh, last year when the NBA reconvened in August and uh, didn't do so well there, uh, losing four straight games there. And then we've got the, uh, picking up a, a win there against Boston um, to finish out things in August. But the preseason, uh, Washington having a game there against Brooklyn, losing by 5, 119 to 114 uh, as they prepare for the regular season. And we had Detroit, and of course Detroit not making the postseason last year. They uh, just getting back to started, and they've played twice already this year, uh, losing to New York and then also defeating New York. Um, following that up a few days later. And um, some low-scoring games, under 100 points there. Uh, both teams scoring under 100 points uh, in those games. 
uh, with the Pistons. And you know what? I like the Pistons in this game uh, to pick up a preseason win uh, going into this. They've already won uh, coming off the back of a win over New York. So I like the Pistons for this and to uh, defeat the Washington Wizards and get on to the next season. I know, of course, Washington did play in the uh, when the NBA returned, but I do like the Pistons uh, in this one. I think the Pistons have uh, a lot to build on this season. Now let's take a look one more game. Let's look at the Atlanta Hawks and the Memphis Grizzlies and look at the Grizz there. They are on fire, burning red hot. Uh, going into this game, two preseason wins right there. Memphis defeating the Minnesota Timberwolves 107 to 105, and then absolutely thrashing the Timberwolves in the follow up game 123 to 104. And I really like the Grizz here in this game. Uh, Grizz, not too bad of a team. Uh, they've been there, thereabouts the last couple of seasons, making the playoffs. And as you can see there, they were there when the league reconvened last year. Uh, didn't do so hot, only picking up one win there from four, but. Again, I like what the Grizz have here, and I think the Grizz uh, can definitely defeat the Atlanta Hawks. Again, the Atlanta Hawks kind of like that, uh, kind of like the uh, Char uh, Charlotte Hornets. They're a team that seems to always be building something uh, and always be working towards the future. When the future comes around, they never seem to be able to do it in the present. But the Hawks there didn't make the playoffs or the play-in last season, but... Uh, uh, they did pick up a win against Orlando, 116-107, to 107, back on the 13th of this month in preseason, but did lose 116-112 to 112 to them. Now, as I said before, I do like the Grizz for this game. I think the Grizz can come away with a victory. Let's just take a look at the head-to-head -head real quick, uh, just to see how these teams did against each other the last times that they played, or the last time that they played. And as you can see there, these teams did play last year, uh, last season, that is, uh, twice in March, home and away, uh, just before the season ended, and we saw that the Grizz picking up two wins, a big thrashing win, 127-88 to 88 there um, at, at, at Atlanta. So that's a, a huge win, um, and, and a 118-101 to 101 win at home in uh, Memphis. So I like the Grizz for this game. I like them to win this. Um, looks like they've won four of the last six games against Atlanta, and I think that the Grizz are going to get this victory and set themselves up for a, um, a good season in the Western Conference and probably um, a season in which they will expect to make the top six to make the playoffs outright without having to go through the play-in, but we'll have to see how that unfolds. Now, guys, remember it's a 72-game season this year in the NBA. Things are going to be shortened by 10 games. We're going to have those play-in games, and of course, you can read up on all of that uh, in the blog over at zcodesystem.com backslash blog. And of course, here on YouTube, let us know what you like and what you don't. Let us know which teams that you are backing this year, which teams you think are going to uh, make the playoffs, who's going to win the uh, the NBA title, who's going to be MVP this year. Is Giannis's uh, contract extension a good move for the Greek freak? Um, you know, that, that uh, a lot of that deal is probably perpetuated by the COVID-19 um, COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of teams may not be able to free up that cash to go out and pay the Greek freak that much money. But, you know, we'll see what happens this season. Milwaukee favorites right now to win the East, LA Lakers favorites to win the West and to go on and win the NBA title. Let us know what you like, guys. Let us know who you like. Give us a thumbs up if you're scrolling through and you like what you see, or if you're back for another time, uh, let us know and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you're up to date every time we post here on Z-Code System. We'll be back soon, guys, with our next YouTube video where we look at more games, more picks, and more predictions of the sports going on around the world right now. So, guys, I'm Drew, and it's good to see you. We'll see you next time here on Z-Code System.